Well, hello again, it's Trudy here from Heart Patterns with another marvellous tutorial for you. This one is for our rather gorgeous Wong Sing Jones Sakura Bomber Jacket. Um, and yeah, I'm going to do a very simple tutorial for you, not really a sew along, not really particularly in depth because there's not a lot of depth to this one. It's very, very simple. But I really wanted to show you the kind of order of work and just the little fiddly bits, there's only a handful of them, and just how nicely it comes out. This is uh, my prototype version of it. Um, I made this one in a vintage rayon voil, which means I can't get any more of it, so I had to be really careful with it. Um, but it's come out really, really well, and that's because this is designed for a woven fabric. However, for our sample here, this is a knit fabric. It's a lightweight ponty knit. Um, only using it really because, <laughs> because I like the print. It's a, a mini cheetah print, so uh, a mini cheetah print bomber jacket really what's not to like. Um, and for this particular one, even though it's designed for a woven, you do need a stretchy knit rib for your neck band and for your cuffs as well. So please bear that in mind. This one has just enough stretch to make it work. Um, however, <laughs> this one does take about two and a half yards of fabric and I only had two yards of this, so I've squeaked it out. So I don't have any more left. If I make a mistake, <gasps> it's all over for me. Um, the other thing to point out to you is this. Uh, on our illustration, we have a trim, a trim inserted through here and around the top of the cuffs. It's optional. You obviously don't have to use it if you don't want to, but I'm going to want to show you how to do it. And I basically, for this one, I'm using an inch and a half strip, a very stretchy black knit rib. I'm going to fold it in half and just insert it on those seams. But I'll show you how to do it. It's really not hard. Um, okay, so let's quickly go through our pieces because it'll kind of make sense to you. I've just given you half the bomber jacket here because there's, you know, quite big pieces. All right, so we've got our center front. This is our center front seam here where the zipper's going to be, like that. That's our neckline. That's our pocket opening there. I don't know if you can see that pocket opening there. Here are our pocket bags. Had to cut them in cotton. Some lightweight black cotton. Didn't have enough fabric to do it in this. Um, that's our side front. This is our center back and our side back. And this is our raglan sleeve. And our raglan sleeve is kind of, it's kind of one of the cool things on this one. It's kind of one of the things that makes it really special. Um, it's not a one piece raglan. It's actually cut like a jacket sleeve. You know, you've got the jacket sleeve that kind of goes forward on the arm there and it's in two pieces. Uh, this is that, but it's basically got a raglan shoulder area. So all the good things wrapped in one sleeve. Yay, so fab. So um, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to basically put this together. You'll see how to do the pockets, how we'll actually do the zipper and the hem, how we're gonna put the neckband in, all that good stuff. Um, and I'm gonna do it pretty much in the order that the instructions tell you to do it in. And it's really not that hard. It's really, I wanna say it's more like a kind of a deconstructed t-shirt. You know, it's got the knit uh, neckband and, and uh, cuffs. But the only difference is it's got a zipper and a some pockets and some darts, nothing really too tricky, nothing you can't handle for sure. So, okay, let's start off by looking at how we end up preparing the pieces before we start sewing. Okay, so let's have a look at how we prepare our pieces uh, for this bomber jacket. There really isn't a lot of prep work to do, it's mainly just applying interfacing, just strips of interfacing. And I'm showing you on the centre front pieces because that's really the most relevant piece. Although all the pieces you will want to apply the interfacing along the hems, but it's easy enough. So on this one we have got a strip of interfacing down the opening here to stabilise it with a zipper. We have interfacing here for the pocket opening and then we also have it on the bottom there, like a two, two and a half inch strip. Um, this is knit or trico interfacing from Fashion Sewing Supply, of course, it's the only one we use, um, and it is lovely. It's really lightweight and really pretty, and it just behaves itself really nicely. So, here is what we have to do now. Now we've prepped all our pieces, don't forget all the other jacket pieces will have that interfacing strip at the bottom. Now we've prepped all our jacket pieces, here's what we're going to do. We're going to start, um, really with the sleeve. I'm going to start you off with the sleeve um, and we'll come back and look at that shortly. Uh, once we've done that then we start doing the body pieces and then we kind of join it all together and finish it and our work is done. You'll be amazed at how easy it is. So we're going to start with our sleeves 
and um, as I explained before, our sleeves are kind of like a jacket sleeve, but also a raglan sleeve. And I know uh, your original inclination, as soon as you see a raglan sleeve that has a shoulder dart like this, that's the dart that goes along here, your immediate inclination to sort the dart, you must sort the dart, you must not, not yet anyway, this is kind of cru crucial to the whole construction process. All you're going to do though, is you are going to join your under sleeve here, to your upper sleeve, obviously right sides together, um, and press your seams open or to one side, whatever you prefer, and turn it out, and you'll have a perfectly nice sleeve. I will do that shortly, but I will also prepare my cuffs. Here are my cuffs. Not very exciting, are they? <laughs> They're just a rectangle. Okay, but what I have to do is I have to join them here to make a loop, and then of course fold them in half, um, and they'll be my cuff. But I'm also doing the same thing with this. So I'm going to join this at the short ends and then I'm going to, uh, well, I'll show you. I'll put them together and I'll base them together and I'll show you. So going to go and sew this together, going to prepare my cuffs uh, ready for um, putting them onto the jacket later on. Okay, so I have prepared some sleeves for you to have a look at. And I've done one kind of almost done and one is just started. So you can see the difference and see what we're trying to achieve here. So here's our first sleeve, and you can see we've got our raglan kind of dart here, and, but the rest of it is really, you know, it's a two-piece jacket sleeve, nothing exciting there at all for the moment. And I've also prepared our um, cuffs, our cuffs of course are in a loop, like this, you see that? Um, and our trim is the same thing, it's going to be folded in half, so it's got a skinny little loop, bless it, um, and it's going to slip over the top of this one. So you're going to slip that over there and you're going to, well, you might want to pin them together, that would be a good idea. But you're going to treat that as one. You're going to sew along this edge here and you're going to treat it as one. And you're going to get this black trim here popping out as a little insert. Want to see what it looks like? Of course you do. <laughs> I have one here. Of course I do. Okay, so that's what we get at the end of it. We get that nice kind of uh, finish there. Let me just slip my hand in. I'm not even sure which, uh... oh, that's that. Okay, so we get this, and it's still kind of stretchy enough to scrunch up, because you're not going to do that and wear stuff like this. Okay, so you can still do that, so it's still stretchy, uh, because we've used, you know, knit and knit trim, uh, but it sits down like that, and you get that nice little flash of black. Of course, you don't have to use these trims, but if you do, they look great, so you may as well go ahead and try some. So now our sleeves are safely done and out of the way, or as done as we, they can be for now, we are going to go on to the body of the garment. And you have to start, when you're doing the body of the garment, you have to start with the centre front uh, darts. You can't avoid them. There's no other way to do this. You have to do it this way. So you do your darts, they're just normal little baby darts here, and press the seam allowance downwards. And then you're going to add your pocket bags to both centre front and side front and it's really you know it's not a hard thing to do you sorry you stitch them on press your seam allowances edge stitch and then flip them to the back I'm going to go and do it and it's actually easier if you see it once I've done it than when I'm doing it because it'll be like oh obviously of course you're going to do that and then I'll show you how we're going to join side front to centre front down here, around the pocket bag, and down there to give us a really nice, neat front that's ready for, to be put together with the side back and the centre back to have the whole body constructed before we add the sleeves. Okay, so now I've done my prelim parts on the uh, front, so I'm going to show you them kind of halfway down, and then I'm going to show you the other front uh, to so you can see how it is when the fronts are completed. So you start off by doing your dart, that's the wrong side, I'm not sure you can see, it's a tiny, tiny baby dart. Uh, you do your dart and you add your pocket bags. So that's what your centre front piece is going to look like, I know, kind of odd, but what the hey. Um, and this is your side front piece. And then you're going to join them around the edges of the pockets. Obviously down here, across here, and then up from the hem and across there. Let me just lay it out so you can see it better. Okay, so down and across, up and across. You are not going to seal this. Well, you can if you want. It's absolutely pointless because you don't need to do so. Um, so you're going to do that, and then you are going to uh, press the seams one way or open, and you're going to um, lay the pocket bag flat towards the centre front. 
want to see what I mean? Of course you do. Let's have a look at the completed one. I feel like one of those manic, like, children's TV presenters who are kind of, you know, crafty things. Okay, this is how it looks when it's done. You can't really see the dark here, but believe me, when you're wearing it, it makes a huge difference. The seam is here. I've just put a couple of pins there to hold it. So let me flip it over for you and tell you exactly what's going on. All right. Centre front, neckline, whoops, neckline, dart, seam, pocket bag over to here. I have seen these two together um, and I've notched a little diagonal notch at the uh, point where the pocket bag starts and, and finishes because I wanted my seam allowances to go to the side seam but my pockets obviously go to the centre front. Now do not be alarmed if when you do this your pockets are a little bit over or even a little bit under the um, end mark, the, the centre front uh, cut line, it doesn't matter at all, you're just going to base them together to the centre front and then you, when you put the zipper in you're going to ignore the fact there's a pocket there, you're just going to treat it as though it's one piece of fabric. So that's what the inside looks like. Now you've done your um, centre front and side front panels, you can go ahead and join the rest of the body pieces. So here's what I'm going to do for that. I am going to join my centre back and my side back in the same way as I've done this, with so the seams together and press them to the side seam. Um, and then I'm going to join my side seams and press those seams open and also my centre back seams are going to be open. When I've done that, I'll come back and show you and show you how I've pressed them. I know it sounds a bit finicky to kind of see which way you've pressed the seam allowances, but it does make a difference. It makes it lay better and uh, well, it just does. You'll see. OK, uh, I'm going to go and do that and I'll show you it. OK, we have now put together the body pieces for our jacket and um, I'm going to quickly go through them with you and I'll show you which way I've pressed the seam allowances to I can show you on the inside. Um, we've got centre front, front neckline, armhole, around the centre back and then of course we repeat the same thing on the other side. So I'm just showing this half for the moment. We've got um, side front seam, side seam, side back seam, pocket of course, lovely pocket. Um, and now we're ready to put our sleeve on. And this is why I said to you when you're making your, remember your beautiful sleeves, I said to you, do not close up this dart. Don't. Leave that open. You're going to see why in a moment. Um, we're going to join this. Really, it's in one kind of pass like that. You start at the top here and sew it all the way round. All the way, all the way. Mirror it to the top here. And you will have your sleeve attached. Once you've sewn it all the way round, then you go in and close out your dart. Um, I like to press my dart flat. I like to kind of slit it as far as I can and press it flat. It just gives a nicer finish, especially on a heavier fabric like this, a, a ponty like this. So I'm going to show you the other side in a moment and you can see how it looks. But before I do, let's look at the seam allowances. This is what I mean. We've got the side seams are pressed open. The centre back and centre front are towards the side seams and the centre back is just open. It just kind of lays better that way. But Bear in mind that your mileage may vary, you may want to do a different thing, you may want to seam them all together or press them all open, it's really your core. Okay, so there's our front, there's our unattached sleeve, let's look at the other side where we have actually attached the sleeve. And now you can see, see that we've got our sleeve in like this, let me show you the inside how that looks because it's actually much easier to see, especially on this because it's a, a white back ponte. Okay, so your princess seams, oh la la, your princess seams come up here and they match the underarm seam of the sleeve, which is very convenient, all the way down there, and the same on the back, um, but it's literally just one pass, all the way around there and all the way up there, and then as I said, you do your dart, your shoulder dart like this, press it flat, and you're good. So, now we've actually completed the body of the jacket, or at least I will when I've sewn the other sleeve on, we have just three things to do to complete our bomber jacket. Um, I know it's kind of ridiculous, isn't it? It's a relatively simple piece. Um, we have to put on the neckline trim. That's really, really essential that it goes on next. Uh, then we put the zipper in and then we do the hem. And that is it. That's it. There's nothing else to do. This is what I mean when I say it's kind of like, you know, a t-shirt with pockets and a zipper. It's really not such a major thing. So, okay, I'm going to go away and put my... Um, 
my other sleeve in and then I'm going to show you how I kind of map out putting on the neckline trim. It's kind of key and this area here where it meets in the middle at the top of the zipper, that's kind of critical because that's where the eye goes straight away. So you get that right, it's all going to look really, really good. So uh, I'm going to show you my little tricks for that because I may have to actually come right in very, very close and, and uh, show you. Um, yeah, and then we'll put it together and we're done. Okay, so now I'm at the stage where I'm about to join the neckband here onto the neckline. I've got my trim, my contrast trim, and I've basted it on, I've based it on the edge there. And I've actually stitched it flat here because it was misbehaving and curling. But that's okay, it's absolutely as it should be. Uh, this will finish up about 3 eighths of an inch wide. So again, this is our centre front, and I have pressed the um, 3 quarters of an inch seam allowance back. That's really important. And I've put a little crisscross of pins here. Let me see if I can just come in a little bit tighter for you so you can see exactly what I mean. Let me just move this and zoom it. Oh, the wonders of modern technology. Isn't it fab? Okay. Okay, so there's a little crisscross here. That's basically the folded edge that you press under for your zipper, and that is three eighths of an inch down from your cut edge. And that point there where they intersect, that is where your end point of your neckband is going to finish. See so that pin there? That's the pin that's three eighths of an inch away from the cut edge. That has to match that when you sew it on. That's the important bit. Get those bits right at both the, the left and right hand side and you're good. Um, you don't have to be too worried if you don't quite make it there, if it's a little bit back, like a tiny bit, maybe an eighth, maybe three eighths, uh, not three eighths, sorry, an eighth, three sixteenths. Um, but you can't have it going over because it'll be ridiculous. So you need to do that and you need to make sure that you um, pin or mark or base so that these two points here sit together. I'm going to pin them on, I'm going to sew them on, you will see what I mean. Okay, so now we've uh, put the neckband in and you can see where we've finished. We've finished exactly on the centre front fold line. That's as it should be. Don't be too concerned about this seam allowance that you've got left here because after we put the zipper in, we are going to do this, seal it across there to get rid of it and it'll all be tucked away. So now, now we've done this bit, now the neck band is in, we are now going to put on the zipper, then we'll do the hem and we are done. Okay, we are now at uh, the penultimate step, which is putting our zipper in. Uh, now, on your pattern, uh, shopping list and on the website um, I've told you or I've suggested to you to get at least an 18 inch long zipper uh, and then shorten it and the pattern actually contains instructions for you to shorten it because it's a really easy thing to do um, but as it happens I've also done a little baby kind of tutorial for that which is about two minutes long uh, separately to this so if you need to shorten your separating zipper go watch that and then you'll be like oh so easy because it is um, and then you can come back and do this. And I've done that because um, zippers come in very standard lengths. Separating zippers, like the ones that open at the bottom that you need for something like this, come in uh, some lengths, but few colours. So irritating. So um, you might just have to get a longer one in your correct colour and shorten it. It's dead easy though. So go and watch the little tutorial if you need to. And if you don't, stay here and do this. All right. So we've pressed back are three quarters of an inch, we know where the zipper's going. We really need to decide, do we want to see the teeth when we have it in, like that, or do we want to cover them? I actually want to see the teeth. I like that kind of vertical line that the teeth give. I think that's really good. So I'm gonna do that. Now, when you are dealing with um, a separating zipper, you must really work from the bottom. The bottom is key, because the bottom always stays the same no matter what happens at the top end here. So, I'm going to find my trusty hem knot, which is, there we go, um, and I'm going to pin it in there. It's going to go there, and it's going to go back so we can actually see it like this. If I just show you very quickly where it's going to be positioned, I'm just going to put literally a couple of pins in so we can see it. Um, and I'm going to sew it from the back. I'm not going to sew top stitch straight on. I'm trying to avoid as much top stitching as I can on this, so I'm not really in the mood for top stitching with this. But of course, some fabrics just look best with top stitching, so you have to decide. Okay. So it'll be kind of like this. We'll be able to see the teeth when they open. We'll be able to see that tape like that. So what we have to do now is we have to um, place it right sides of the zipper to the right side of the fabric. 
um, and make sure that the teeth bump up against but not over the um, folded edge. So I'm going to do that, uh, pin it on down here and then I just sew it in two passes, one, two. Really not, not hard and if you've done any kind of zipper this is actually one of the easiest ones to do. So I'm going to pin one side and sew one side and show you what I mean. Okay, so I have pinned in one side of the zipper for you so you can see what we're doing and why we're doing it. Um, the bottom edge of it here matches the hem notch and the top edge of it here, uh, this actually happens to be the correct length for this my, by some miracle, um, the stopper I've allied it with the, um, the bottom edge of the trim. So that's pinned in on that side and I've actually sewn it on the other side so let me swoosh that around and show you exactly what it looks like. Because we're also going to do we're going to start off the hem and the um, cleaning up the top bit as well. Okay, so when it's sewn on like this, you can see it's going to sit like that. You're going to see the teeth and it's all going to be nice and flat, especially when you've pressed it. You can top stitch this if you wish. You don't have to. It's entirely up to you. But what we'll do is this. Once we've sewn it in, we're going to fold up our hem here. You can see that fold it up at the notch and pin and then we're going to stitch at the same point at the zipper tape or just a little bit inside it straight down there. Clip those corners, turn it out and you've got a perfect start to your hem. And then of course you can just top stitch all the way around or hand stitch whatever you prefer to do. We are going to attempt the same thing at the top. It doesn't always work because it can be a bit bulky. If it doesn't you're going to have to do this by hand but I prefer to do it by machine if at all possible. Okay, here's what we're going to do. Because this is over the centre front. We have to kind of fold it back. I'm going to fold it back like that. And then we fold, you see that centre front fold line there that you pressed in, fold it the other way against what you pressed. And then you're just going to, whoops, let me just fiddle that down for you. Do that. I've pulled the neckband that way. I'm going to do like maybe half a dozen stitches there and then that corner is going to be turned out. Let me do it for you and then you'll see what I mean. Okay, so now I do believe that you can see exactly the stage we've got to. We're pretty much completed. Um, when we, oh, see I've got uneven pen allowance. This doesn't matter because of course it all looks nice on the outside. When we do this, we sew our zipper on. See that? We can clip the corner off here, clip the corner off, turn it out, and you get this lovely, perfect, kind of crisp, clean edge there right across there that's really really nice and neat. Same applies at the top. This is very very bulky here with you know the trim and the zipper and the neckband and everything. Doesn't matter, I've graded it down as much as I can, I've pressed it flat and actually it's worked really well. Now if I wanted to, uh, while I was doing the hem, which is really straight through here, I'm just going to sew that all the way around, um, I can top stitch if I want to, all the way around the neckline, down the centre front, around the bottom and back again. I'm not sure what I do. I'm going to do the bottom uh, top stitching and then we'll see what it looks like. And uh, yeah, we are done. We are done as a done thing. And um, I think you will agree that it's a relatively easy uh, style to put together. Like I said before, t-shirt with a zip, really. Um, this is our finished object. Rather oh, gorgeous. I would love to model this version for you. Um, except for the fact that we're filming this in August and this is a Ponty and I promise you I'll probably last about 30 seconds before I drop from heat exhaustion. So, however, having said that, this is going to be a great kind of fall and winter piece for me. Well, certainly a winter, this is almost like my winter coat, I think. Um, but really, really nice piece, beautiful and easy to make. Although it has to be said, my overlocker for some reason didn't like this fabric one little bit. Uh, my straight machine loved it. My overlocker was like, not going to play nicely at all. But never mind, I won because those machines are not the boss of me. So here is our beautiful Sakura bomber jacket. I really do suggest that you make yourself a bunch of these. Uh, knit ones, woven ones, lightweight, pretty evening ones, groovy linen ones, all sorts of things. It'll make it almost any kind of blouse or jacket weight fabric or t-shirt, you know, a t-shirt fabric with a bit of substance to it. And it's going to look really, really good on you and you are going to be amazed at how versatile it is for your closet. So once again, thank you for watching.